Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for The Shy Season 3, Episode 6. I find my favorite around the house dress that I always do my reviews in. So for the next week or so, I'm going to be in this dress. Okay, love it. I hate it. I don't care. Shoulders out, boobs out. I'm going to be here. Okay, anyway. Okay, let's get started. If you have not done so already, please go number two. Subscribe to my channel and become a whole Jaybird. Jaybird. Dun, 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 and all that goodness and stuff. <clears throat> Y'all get ready to breathe. Okay, let's go. We have two. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And remember to relax. To relate. To release and to center yourself and everyone around you because so much is going on in the world today. Okay, I have the lipstick I have on today is not Fenty, surprisingly. It is a Kat Von D. I don't know what color this is. Okay, but it's a Kat Von D, one of her liquid lipsticks. I bought all them lipsticks. I ain't wore not one. So, y'all gonna get one lipstick in every video that's different so I can get my money's worth, you know, at least one wear out of the lipsticks or whatever. To me, it's like an orangey type of color, but I can't I can't see what it is. It starts with a T, okay? Anyway, so let's get to these people, okay? I kind of separated it, like, person by person or whatever to make it slow better. Oh, we know already to like, to comment, to share, okay? To follow me on IG on our Twitter at J underscore Lee's underscore corner. And all of that information is also in the description box. Boom, okay? So, Duda's story, okay? We see, you know, Duda and Candy sitting around watching the news and both looking upset about something, okay? And what we see is Duda Mama all on the news saying Duda ain't shit now and he ain't never gonna be shit, okay? And not shit, no, I'm his mama, okay? And not only am I his mama, you know, I'm a mama who don't like him. And I pick, you know, Lena Wake's character, I think her name was Camille. As the person who should be the mayor, okay? Because you can't pick your son, but you can pick your mayor and not pick Camille, lesbian, Lena Waith lady, okay? And, and hang again, I hate that bitch. I, you need to respond to what she's saying because she on some bullshit. And do like, you know, calm down now, you know what I'm saying, uh, Rosalind. That's my mama, okay? Do not engage in that bullshit, okay? And she's like, but you ain't the person to stay quiet. He was like, shut up! I say, who are you yelling at? I guess that rose, okay? He's like, I said, do not engage in that bullshit, okay? I'm not saying anything yet because she wants him to respond to his mama saying he's a bad person. And she said, you know, James, do that up here. I said, she called him do that on camera? The gangster, gangster name? Oh, okay. But she brings about he's a bad person. He's only in it for the money or whatever. He is, you know, he's a selfish person or whatnot. His business is going bankrupt. Okay, it's in, it's in the red or the black, whatever means the word thing. He is not in this for nothing but some money. And she's like, you need to respond. I said, shut up. And so we see Rosalind leave. But Candy, Candy engages anyway. I can't keep, I can't remember to call her Rosalind. So sometimes I'm calling her Candy, sometimes I'm gonna call her Rosalind. Just get with it, okay? So Candy engages anyway. So Candy meets up with Mama, okay? I'm like, hey, uh, do that, Mama. But she's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. What you want? I'm saying you ain't, you ain't shit. My son ain't shit. What you want? And so Candy gives her twenty thousand dollars to stop talking to the press and have her sign an NDA or whatever. So Mama Duda brings uh, that dyke. I said, she call her a dyke? And because Lena Waithe wrote this, I'm going to say the word dyke, okay? Because she's a lesbian. Anyway, you know, that dyke didn't come to me. I called her because she's a mean, cold-hearted bitch who would do anything to get what she wants. She reminds me of me at her age, okay? And she would be a better mayor than my son could ever be, okay? And more of a man than my son could be, too. And I'm looking like, oh, that's not nice. Your man of a son ain't more of a man than the lesbian who's running for mayor? That's, you know, a lot. And do die out the blue like, like Dracula pops up from nowhere oh. oh where did the Dracula come from I don't know where Dracula came from okay cause he looked like he could be Dracula right here but I digress okay and he hears her saying how he ain't shit and how Camille Lena Wave character is you know more of a man than he can be and she looks speechless and like shocked 
for him to be in her presence. As if, you know, I can talk shit behind your back, but if you hear me talking shit about you, I'm scared, okay? And he just was like, hey, Ma, I love you too. Now, get the fuck out my house. I was like, oh, she gotta go, okay? And she walked out and she leaves. But Candy also was like, oh, damn. He was like, yep, just when I was about to start trusting your ass. And he walks away. But babe, but babe. I'm like, Candy, he mad at you. Now, over to Jake's story, okay? Jake's story. Now, Trig invites Jake over. Okay, and Trig and Jake is chit-chatting. This isn't where they were chit-chatting, but this is a, a scene, you know, I didn't do shit in order. So... He invites Jake over mainly because Reg told Trick when Reg was alive that he had stashed 50 grand in the house in case of an emergency. And he like, you know what I'm saying? I can't think of no bigger emergency than trying to get custody of you. So where did he stash the money? Man, Reg, he laughed at you because Reg never had any money. He was always broke. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no money in this house. And I'm like, well, I guess, you know, that's what it was. So then when Jake brings up how, is that all you wanted? Because I got to go. I got to go hang out with my best friend and his girlfriend for his birthday or whatnot. And then he also brings about how you don't like Kevin's girlfriend. One trick brings up how you know y'all lucky to be able to be out here like the Simpson having birthday celebrations. I've never even had a birthday party for myself, okay? But he brings up how you know you must like your friend's girl if you act like you don't like her. You're like, man, no, nah, she thinks she knows you think because she rich. So okay. Trig brings up how, you know what I'm saying, having money don't mean shit. You can have money and, you know what I'm saying, it doesn't fix anything. You know what I'm saying? And Jake brings up, well, you know what I'm saying, if you had some money, maybe you would not be here staying in our dead brother's tra uh, trap house. I'm like, he show sure is still staying in the trap house. So we then see they go to play some basketball. I'm looking like, Jake, ain't you supposed to be going over to see Kevin, but I digress. Okay? And out there playing basketball, we see Trig notices a car following them okay but he's still hanging out with his brother so jake asked him like you know what i'm saying why don't you leave like what made you leave in the first place anyway you know what i'm saying to where you now you back and trig brings up how you know what i'm saying well look i wasn't a man yet okay i wasn't a man yet and i'm back okay i wasn't a man yet and i had to go somewhere to basically become a man but he could see that jake is still like you know, pissed off or whatever. He like, look, I can't change shit about the past. I can't go back and not be gone or whatever. But I'm back now. I'm your blood. Like, which is you gonna always be pissed or whatever? You, okay, fine. You wanna be pissed? You wanna hit me? Well, then hit me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hit me. And so Jake punches him or whatever. He like, all right, boom. Takes it to the face. Okay, is, is that it? You know what I'm saying? You still, you, we good now? He like, look, I may not be, you know what I'm saying, your superhero, okay? But I'm your blood or whatever. But I will not be. I will not be, okay? You're a punching bag. Meaning you can't keep being pissed off at me and then as soon as you can just, you know, beat up on me with your feelings. Like, that is how it's going to work. Like, we either going, you know what I'm saying, be able to move forward or no, nah, okay? And then we see, you know, he's like, all right. I guess so. And they then go to some abandoned house. And he brings up how, you know, the only other place that Rick would have called home would have been this place. And I'm like, it must be where they used to stay. Okay, with this damn show abandoned, okay? And so he walking around touching walls, you know what I'm saying, trying to sound, you know, sound out where it could be like him saying hollow or whatever. And he then punches it all in the wall, and boom, bow, pow, there's the bag of money, okay? He said, I don't know, you know, this is great, but I'm not going to use this money to get a lawyer for you if you don't want to stay with me. And as they talking or whatnot, we then hear someone walking up. Sneak, 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 sneak. Okay, who is it? It's the same dude who was following them in that little car or whatever. So Trick has like a little pipe. And when dude walks around the corner, Trick basically beats him to death. Okay, at least knocks him out. He's at least unconscious. And then, you know, Trick like, that's dude I people. He's like, I know he's been following me all day. Like, dude I trying to kill me. Oh, so that's why you had me with you all day? They could have shot and kill me. Like, nah. Nah, dude, I need you for some reason. He needs you, so he's not going to do nothing to me while you around me or whatever. I mean, Jay, look. Dude, I killed Red. She was like, what? No, he didn't. The wild boy did. They like, nah, nah, nah. Dude, I had them do it so it wouldn't come back on him. He was like, well, why would, you, why would that? He like, you not dumb, Jake. You know what I'm saying? If someone do I don't fuck with killed his people why are the people who did it still alive and jake then realized well damn you know you're right and so trick like look you have to pick either me or him because again i'm not gonna use this money for you if you don't want to be with me because it's like jake keeps making it seem as if he good with dude i not knowing dude i killed your brother ronnie story okay so we see keisha keisha is in the house handcuffed chained up to the bed or whatever and she's drawing kevin 
a birthday card, okay? She's crying as she's, she's drawing him a card. She's having flashbacks of when she would take him out for his birthday to eat at like a little restaurant or whatever to get pancakes. That seemed to be their annual thing, you know, for her and her brother were not innocent. And she would sit there and take pictures of him and everything. She gave him a little, a little gift book of all the pictures over the years that, she, that she'd taken of him and everything. It was real, real cute, you know what I'm saying? And even though he's getting older, it's like, you know, you will always be my little brother, you know what I'm saying? He's like, what you act like? You dying? Like, you ain't dying. You was going with the college. She's like, well, you're going to miss me. So, whatever. So, again, this is before, you know, the last year before, you know, she went missing or whatever. And so, she's up there. So, you know, making this, you know, happy, happy birthday bro card. And she's just crying and crying and crying. We then hear, you know what I'm saying, crazy kidnapper dude come in or whatever. He then goes, I'm like, she's not a dog. She's not a dog or whatever. He got her trained up like one. So, he's then sitting there with her. Combing her hair with that damn brush. No detangling shampoo. This dry brush of her hair. And it's making me cringe. Because I'm like, you're going to pull out all her hair. Okay, all her hair or whatever. So, she's sitting there and she's crying. As he's like, you know what I'm saying? You got to be a good girl for daddy. And I'm like, oh, he just keeps me out. So, as he's sitting there brushing her hair as she's on the floor. You hear, knock, knock, knock on the door. Okay, and at first he just keeps brushing her hair. And you hear bang, 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 bang. So he's like, oh, God damn it. I got to get up and go. Now, now, you know, he go upstairs or whatever. He answers the door. It's Ronnie. Hey, you know, I thought it was the other day. I thought I heard some screaming, you know, during the blackout. He's like, yeah, my wife thought she heard it too, whatever. And said, we heard it across the street. But we always hear shit over here, whatever. It's always something. Now, when he said, my wife said she heard something, I said, but he ain't got no wedding ring on. Where your wife at? Where's the ring at? I'm saying, I... Notice that lie, okay? So Ronnie then say, can I use your bathroom real quick? And I'm looking like, what? He's a whole stranger. Ronnie makes it seem as if he lives around the neighborhood. But since the power went out, his bathroom is messed up or whatever. So he got to pee or whatnot. But when the guy can like, no, you know, I don't know. My house kind of messy or whatnot. Ronnie then gets honest and look, man, look, I, I ain't got a pop to piss in or even a window to throw, throw it out of. He's like, what you mean? Ronnie then points over to his, you know, a homeless man cart. So the guy then like, oh, you're homeless. Okay, cool. He doesn't say, can I just please use the bathroom? Dude then lets homeless stranger Ronnie into his house as he has a kidnapped Keisha in the basement. What kidnapping person lets a homeless stranger in their house to pee or poop? What the fuck does that? So Ronnie's now in the house, okay? We then see creepy kidnapper is for sure the guy who we seen running who Emmett gave a flyer to. He's also the guy who was in the pizzeria and put a couple of dollars in the missing Keisha can when Kevin was upset. So he's, we've seen him twice. Boom, pow, pow. It's not the um, teacher who, the, the coach who we thought it was from before. So he brings up how the bathroom is upstairs. So he walking through the house upstairs looking around. I'm like, first of all, the house ain't messy at all. So that's clue number two. The dude be lying and whatnot. But Ronnie goes upstairs. He's like looking from room to room. You know what I'm saying? As he's walking to the bathroom, looking to how, you know, nice and neat it is. It doesn't look like, you know what I'm saying, anyone is kidnapped upstairs. Okay. And so he goes to the bathroom. Now Keisha hears footsteps upstairs and also the dude down. There's a Keisha starts screaming. Help! Somebody help me! But creepy, <laughs> creepy kidnapper, because of the TV really loud, so Ronnie can't hear it all the way upstairs. Ronnie thinks he hears something because Keisha's screaming, she's hollering, she's shaking her chains, and she's banging on the wall so that someone should be able to hear. But again, he cuts the TV up really, really, really loud. So when Ronnie comes down, like, come down, like, man, did you hear that? I thought I heard something. And then the guy then picks up like a. A trophy was on, he was on basically, you know, kill Ronnie. But when Ronnie said, maybe I was just hearing things, you know, I be hearing things. The guy puts it down, like, yeah, I be hearing things too. And so Ronnie leaves. So I'm looking like, God damn it. We then see he go to see Miss Ethel. Okay, and Miss Ethel is all dressed up, looking nice and pretty because she wants to go out on the town. Now she wants to go to the club that she used to own way back when. The club used to be like a little cocktail lounge, little music, little spoken word, you know what I'm saying, little performance or whatever. A little nice, elegant place. Well, it went from a cocktail lounge to just a cock lounge. Okay, now it's like a stripper place or whatnot. And Miss Ethel, like, well, you know, why you bring me here, Ronnie? He like, because you kept asking me to, Grandma. Uh, 
Because you keep asking me, Grandma. She's like, oh, my God, maybe I should go home or whatever. But then when the dancers come out and one of the dancers in front, maybe I shouldn't. You got some singles? Miss Ethel up here popping singles on the young strippers. I say, girl, really, Miss Ethel? Okay, so Ryan said, you know, okay, Grandma, have fun. Okay, so Miss Ethel had some fun in the a dude popping his booty on Miss Ethel. I'm looking like that's just seen too much. Now, Emmett's story. Okay, Emmett's story. Um, Emmett and Tiffany go to the dispenser. Okay, he takes her. No, she takes him to where she gets her weed from. It's real fancy. And it's like, look, I, it took me a long time to be able to get in here. Like, I need to just not go in here and fuck up nothing. Like, leave me be or whatever. So, she in the shop for a weed and she getting it, whatever. And then when he hear that she's getting a whole bunch of it and whatnot, but it's costing her $4,000, even though the price that it is single-handedly is, like, cheaper than that. It's something where she's paying more money than she has to. He suggests to the cashier girl, like, she should get a bulk, you know, discount because she buys so much. Like, she should be paying, you know, those wholesale prices or whatever. We don't get discounts, okay, at the all. And he's like, like, what? You know, why Why not? And he doing the, the exact thing she said not to do. Don't come in here acting no goddamn fool. But he did anyway, okay? And so, <laughs> when Emma said, let me talk to the manager, I'm like, oh, he's not asking for a manager and so here goes security gonna put him out or whatever but then the manager or the owner pops up and who is it it is none other than hannibal okay hannibal who was brandon's cousin hannibal was in season one but he was the cousin who gave brandon the money to buy his taco truck because he sold weed back then and whatnot so hannibal has graduated from just selling weed you know what i'm saying from his his, his house to having a whole dispensary um, that's really, really fancy. There was security cameras and security, or all that stuff. I want to go there too. Now I need to smoke weed. They're chit chatting or whatever, smoking some weed, getting high. And then, you know, uh, it meant say, okay, well, let's talk some bitch. Like, I think that, you know what I'm saying, because she buys so much, like, she should get a mass, you know, person discount. I'm, no, I'm not giving no goddamn discounts. I don't want my customers, you know, st- you know, stalking up, stalking up, stocking up on my product because then they become my competition. <laughs> But bottom line is, she don't want to be a dispensary. She's want to sell weed to people, okay? She wants to be a worker bee, not an owner bee. And I'm like, well, I guess so. And so, he thinks about it, does the math in his head. Like, okay, I guess it's not a big issue if, I, if she gets a discount. If she brings me that many people, then the special weed that I have that can go to cancer patients or, or whoever, um, she can get that to them without them having to come here. Because you have to be approved to come there. So... You know, it does make more sense. She'll buy more stuff. He'll make more money. And then, you know what I'm saying, that'd be that or whatnot. And so, boom, it's a deal. But So, they then go see her cancer patient to give her the weed or whatnot. But old girl ain't got the money. She ain't got the money, okay? And so, Emmy like, well, this is some bullshit. And I feel like she's almost using her cancer as an excuse to get free weed because... My phone is off. You know, my Wi-Fi is not working right or whatever. So I couldn't call and say, you know, that I didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? But I need it because I spent my last on my chemo pills. Okay? And so it makes it feel bad. Okay, you know, when you get the money, whatever, you can pay me then. Well, I don't want to, you know, have no debt. You know, because my spirit or my soul could leave here at any moment. How about I give you a free tarot read? I'm looking like, is the tarot read in the cost of weed? Because if it ain't, I want my money. Okay, I, that's how I said, well, she used, you know, she using it to get for, I, I digress. So, she does a whole tarot card reading or whatever. She, you know, y'all love each other, okay? It's a strong love here, okay? However, there's danger on the horizon, okay? Oh, yeah, this card right here, that means, you know what I'm saying, some bullshit afoot. You know, it's going to be some hardness, some hardships coming up. with make typically, okay, he going to cheat again. And she then say a card slip. Well, basically, in layman's term, like, your dick is too thirsty for it. Tiffany Coochie ain't enough uh, juice for it. So, you know what I'm saying? What your dick won't her pussy can't provide, okay? You require too much cooch for her one cooch, okay? It's, 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 t- I mean, your dick needs more. I'm like, well, I mean, we've always known that. Because she's upset, Tiffany is. <laughs> and, and like, but I'm not, che- like, I'm not cheating. I mean, you're not right now. You know, not right now. Tiff brings, like, I've been to her before, and she's never been wrong with one of her readings. I'm looking like, well, then you've always known Emmy one shit. If you've always known Emmy one shit, why are you still with them? I'm just confused. But, again, babe, I'm not, I'm not 
cheating. I, I'm not cheating. I'm not going to do that, okay? Okay, fine, okay? If you're not cheating, fine, you better not fuck up. Do not fuck it up, okay? And you also need to get a job. And he said, cool, so they suppose you're on good footing. So, now nah, we have Kevin's story. So, Kevin, of course, is his birthday, okay? And, you know, he talking to his mom or whatever. Yeah, Kevin mom. brings up how he come hanging out with his friends because they have plans or whatever. And mom like, you know, look, I know you're getting older, but I really want... You know, to be able to spend time with you for your birthday. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I need you to come back home because I'm cooking dinner or whatever. And I want to spend time with my son on his birthday, okay? And we see Dre give him some money. He leave or whatnot. But Dre tells her how, you know, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Me and Papa plan already like a little surprise party. And so, you know, Papa going to have him come here tonight, okay? So, it's okay. Not so, some kind of way I pushed mute when I was talking about my Ishan and... Papa, so a quick little edit as I'm editing. Maisha and Papa went to get to pick up the cake. The girl couldn't spell the name right. That was funny. We also see Papa wanting to admit they're in a relationship. Maisha wants to wait to admit that they're dating or whatever because she don't want people's opinions on them so they mix. Cool, cool, cool. We also see that Papa is starting to question things more. Um, that he's getting older, you know what I'm saying? He's questioning why God does this thing or that thing because, again, he's getting a little bit older and that was really it. But I don't know how the hell I push mute. Anyway, back to the story. Now we do see, you know, Kevin and Gemma went skating. Okay? They went skating or whatever. And, you know, she invited several of female friends there because Jake was supposed to show up. But Jake ain't showed up because Jake is hanging out with Trig. So as Kevin is skating by the two girls, he hears them say, these two little white girls, you know, so well, I hope they found his sister. And I'm saying the sister been missing for a long time or whatever and blah, 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 which makes him upset because he don't want people knowing she missing as if it's not, you know what I'm saying, public. Like y'all didn't have, have vigils. Y'all have, y'all have flyers out. I mean, what the fuck? Okay. So they go to like a little restaurant, the same one he usually goes with Keisha for his birthday. And you know, she gives him a little gift, a little iPad. Okay. A little nice little iPad. All right, Miss Rich. And she's like, well, I just want you to you know, have something nice. Because again, she's rich. To her, that's like nothing. To her, that's like, oh, I gave you a, a bottle of water. Okay. Anyway, as she's sitting there, he see that she's kind of like, you know what I'm saying, sad or whatnot. He's like, what's wrong? I, I like you, Kevin. I, I really do like you. I know I like you too. She then say, but, you know, it's my fault. The kids know. He's like, what? Well, you know, I think, you know what I'm saying, you know, they, they know because of me. He's like, why would, you, why would you do that? He's like, look, I was talking to my mom about Keisha and about how strong you were, you know what I'm saying, you know, dealing with that or whatever, how I could not be that strong. And I think my mom told one of the other moms who probably told the kids. And that's kind of how I spread around or whatever. And so, she's like, it's my fault because I talked to my mom. Why would you do that? Why? She's like, well, I wanted to, like, get advice on how to, like, help take your mind off of it. I just, I just didn't know what to do or whatever. So, she went to her mom to talk about the boy she's dating. Like, mom, this is what he's going through. And I need to know, like, how to, you know, be there for him. And he gets upset. I'm like, Kevin. Really, Kevin? Don't pick Kevin. What the fuck? Bro, I was very, I was very upset with Kevin. For being upset with Gemma. For her, it's like, I just wanted to know how to help you, you know, f you know, deal with this or whatnot. Oh, you thought getting me, buying me a gift would do this? She's like, no, no, not at all. What is it? You know, do you want me to make you feel better about my, my sister? She could be dead. She's like, don't say that. She could not, don't say that. Well, she could be dead. You know what I'm saying? What do you want? She's like, I just want you, you know what I'm saying, to talk about it. Well, I don't want to talk about it. And he walks off and leaves her there crying. I was like, Kevin. And I get Kevin as a young man. He's upset. And he doesn't know yet how to express himself or to talk about the fact that she's missing. He don't know what to do. He's just not talking about it at all. So it's a lot of built up shit within him. But I still feel like she didn't do shit wrong. She not wrong for talking to her mom about what you and her are going through because you I'm pretty sure she realized like you know you need to, to do something to not be so packed with all that emotion or whatever and she needed to help you supposed to ask your mom but I digress okay so Keisha's story okay so Keisha is at the house crying chained up because again Ronnie you know was there well she knows Ronnie but she knows somebody but if someone was there and you know they could not help save her she was just crying 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 and he gonna creepy man oh he's upset you know, I heard you making noise I you you won't behave and he like puts in the chair boom okay 
so again, as you see, she's chained to the bed, but she also has head. She also has handcuffs on. And you know, he brings up how you know the first time I saw you, you reminded me of my crush, my first crush. She was so cute, with soft and natural hair, just like you. And I'm like, it was so creepy hearing him talk to her. Okay, and I'm sorry, I'm giving you a lot, but it was okay. He like, and I just, I just wanted to be with her and rub my fingers through her hair and as he's doing this he's he's touching her shoulders he's rubbing her hair okay i asked her out one time and she rejected me you know she then dated some football player you know tried to front herself like a whore you know wearing her shirts open you know more and more and then she gave herself to every nigga on the block getting pregnant getting fat on welfare I couldn't save her, but I can save you. And as he's talking to her, you know, he's getting closer and closer to her body and saying he wears that. He was, you know, he's got real close. You know what I'm saying? As he's talking to her, he has scissors in his hand. And as he's talking to her, he's cutting her hair. He's saying, I couldn't save her, snip, but I can save you, snip. And I'm like, he just cutting her hair off. I'm like, he is a fucking psychopath. Okay, a whole psychopath, okay? And then we see, you know, later on, and he's at the table with her, feeding her. And he brings up how, you know what I'm saying, you have to eat to keep your strength up. And I'm like, strength for what? To beat your ass? Anyway, you know, she's like, if I'm good, if I'm good, can I, can I ask for something? And then she kind of reaches out with her handcuffed hand and just touches his hand. Because she's like, he likes me. And if I'm good, he won't hurt me. So let me try to use that. He likes me. And I remind him of, his, of someone who we like once upon a time or whatever um, to my advantage. So can I ask for something? And she kind of just touches his hand. And you can tell she's doing what she has to do to stay alive, basically. Because he's unstable. He's batshit crazy, okay? And another thing is I feel like him saying how she reminded him of his first crush reminds us of... He knows that she's young. You know what I'm saying? And he's still trying to take it. It's, it's, and we don't know what he's done to her. We don't know if all he's done is keep her there chained up, cleaned. Because we haven't seen him touch her in any kind of sexual way. We've just seen him want to have her covered up in a tracksuit. Body clean. So he's, had, he's seen her naked. Um, excuse me. And he's always touching her hair and he was like sniffing her hair so he's he's definitely crazy okay so we then see uh dude i dude i sitting around doing an interview bringing up how his mom has mental health issues okay she's always had these issues her whole life but he's kept her safe by leaving it out the press but you know what i'm saying thanks to camille you know for exposing his family's issues because now that can be his platform because we need to do more you know what i'm saying to help this crisis of mental health issues in the black community okay so he's like i'm gonna use this to my advantage okay because he's do that he's sneaky dicky okay he then brings about camille has said so many things off the record that everyone needs to hear he then plays a recording of her talking or whatever saying how she you know i'm going to continue to go to these you know churches in these poor neighborhoods because you know poor people in those neighborhoods who have nothing more to believe in except jesus will believe anything and he kind of you know since smiles as he plays the recording for the cameras okay we then see miss ethel miss ethel was at the strip club okay and she's at everybody they cut the music off they sit around and she's just talking to them about how it used to be back in the day when it was her club how you know back then we were just happy to be black you know and to be away from the south and we could be free to be free you know what i'm saying we had a good time here all the time, you know what I'm saying, and we just enjoy life then. But then, like, okay, I'm getting it's getting late. I'm I'm a little bit tired and a little bit drunk, so I'm gonna go ahead back to my house. Okay, so she then um we then see Ronnie brings her back to her room. This is a great night, Ronnie. I'm sure it was, Grandma. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go to bed. So he lays her down in the bed. She's still dressed and looking all good and stuff or whatever, and she wants to go to sleep. Ronnie. It's cold in here. Like, give me the blanket. He then goes to her little, uh, her little cabin thing to get the blanket. And then we turns around, like, you know, uh, puts the blanket on her. He realized Miss Ethel has that quickly passed away. I'm like, bitch, 
they didn't kill Miss Ethel. I say, Lord, Miss Ethel then went to the upper room with Jesus. I'm like, no! I'm like, I can't, because he's like, Grandma? Grandma? And he puts his head through her mouth to see she's not breathing. Puts his head on her chest to hear her heart not beating. And then, you know, he just look at her, looking all peaceful. And all dolled up, looking all great. Her lipstick on her red dress, and her little and, and, and the little the little dandelion in her hair. The dandelion, dandelion, the flower, the flower in her hair. And he just cries of her body because again, all he had was his grandma. And I'm like, damn. But as she said, I had a great day, and she just died right there. Mm. Mm -mm. Now we then see, you know, at Kevin's house or whatever, he's surprised, surprised, surprised for his birthday. Everyone, it was, it was Papa, Maisha, Tiffany, Emmett, Jake, uh, of course his mama, and Dre, all there surprised him for his birthday. And he was happy that his mom remembered to get him, get him the pancakes. Cause, you know, every year Keisha would give him pancakes or whatever. What kind of mom would I be if I didn't get your pancakes? Okay? And then, but before he walked into the apartment, he got a phone call. His phone rang, and he just, hello? Hello? And he just hung up or whatever. And then we see he get a text from Gemma, you know what I'm saying? You know, please talk to me. You know, I did not mean to hurt you, but please talk to me. But he again ignores it or whatever. And he's just in his house happy uh, for his little birthday or whatever. And he blows out the candles, okay? But we then see what Keisha asked for. She asked to call Kevin for his birthday. So we see the call he got, it was her. But she couldn't say shit. So she couldn't talk, but she could hear him. And he just didn't know it was her on the phone or whatever. It was a black car. And then, you know, the guy hangs up and says, Are you happy now? And she just cries and cries and cries and says, Yes. And she just, Girl. And that was the whole episode. I still feel like they're drawing out this whole Keisha kidnap thing. I mean, I think we didn't have to wait so long to figure out who had her. I think, you know, so this is episode six. Like, I don't want to wait till episode 8 to hurt for her to be found. I, I don't want next season to be about healing from Keisha being kidnapped. Like, I don't want a whole season of that. That's if it gets the fourth season. I'm sure it will. But, I mean, it was a good episode. I'm not saying it's a bad episode, but I feel like... I don't know what more I want. Because I don't dislike the season. I don't, but I still feel like... I guess it's being like this drawn out. I guess is what it is. But anyway, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.